So from the production side, we're moving straight into the retail sector. We found a retail company that is willing to open up about their food waste journey, or should we say food loss journey? More about that later. Colonet Group does not beat about the bush. Vic de Meester, head of the environmental uh, department within Colonet Group, is here today, well, he's online uh, from his home, to talk about how at Colonet they acquire and use data within their own operations, but also how they look back at their suppliers. Um, so welcome, Vic. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, first of all, for the invitation and for the kind uh, introduction. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk about food loss in retail, uh, a rational approach. I will uh, explain later on why I uh, call it a rational approach. Um, first of all, I want to tell you in brief, what does a retailer do exactly? Huh? Um, and if we bring it back to uh, very the the, the the main um, goals of a retailer is what we do is we buy in big quantities from producers and to, we try to sell it in small quantities to consumers. Huh? That is what retailers do. The challenge of retail, uh, of course, is selling the right product at the right place in the right quantities to the right people. Huh? Uh, that's a challenge of retail uh, because our goal is to sell every uh, product that we have bought from our producers to our consumers, because otherwise we have waste, of course, and we want as much uh, as um, a low uh, waste as we can get. Huh? Therefore, you have to know that um, for us, a banana is not a banana. For us, a banana is not a food product uh, or is not a food for, human, um, for humans. For us, a banana is a product that we want to sell. Uh, so that is our, uh, our uh, business case. We buy and we sell. Uh, so we are not emotionally attached to the banana. If we lose the banana, we lose um, revenue, uh, we lose profit. And that's why we look at a very, in a very rational way to that banana. Um, and that's why we measure food loss and we measure loss in general. We don't only measure food loss, we also measure uh, losses um, of all our products that we are trying to sell to our cu um, customers. Huh? Why? Of course, because I've told you already that when we lose a product, we lose profit, we lose revenue, um, although we are not emotionally attached to the product. Uh, for us, the only valid KPI to measure loss of food loss or other loss is the percentage of bought products that we cannot sell to the customer. Uh, because from the moment that we redraw products from our shelves, uh, for us, the product is lost. Uh, for us, the product will no longer generate revenue, will no longer give us profit. So we want to know the percentage of products that we have bought and we have not um, sold to the customers. So what we do is we count every product that we redraw from our shelves and that is regarded as loss regardless of the destination that we are giving to it after it is redrawn from, from our shelves. Huh? So that is why we say product loss does not necessarily have to be product waste and food loss does not necessarily have to be food waste. Huh? Um, in fact, we redraw food uh, products from our shelves. Huh? But that does not necessarily mean that the food is lost as food product for human uh, beings. Uh, that's uh, why we always make the difference between food loss and food waste. Not all the loss in retail is also wasted. And then um, to give uh, Brian some feedback, on this slide you can see that we already measure our percentage of loss since 19, uh, since 2007. 
Huh? In 2010, not Tesco, but we were the first retailer to publish these figures uh, in our annual reports. Huh? And we do that uh, every year because we want, uh, for, for us, this is a, uh, is a KPI. Um, and uh, we want also that our stakeholders know how we are doing on that purpose. Yeah? So as you can see here, um, if we take into account every product that is sold in one of our shops, in 2021, we had a loss percentage of 0.79%. Yeah? Of course, everyone knows directly that you have much loss, uh, much less loss in non-food products than you have in fresh products. Huh? So if we take into account every product, our loss percentage is 0.79% in 2021. Huh? To give you um, uh, some kind of indication on uh, how uh, much revenue that represents that figure, uh, um, in 2021, uh, uh, Colored Group had a total revenue uh, of about 9 billion. So you don't have to be Einstein um, to know that 1% of uh, loss of product represents approximately 80 million euros a year. Um, if you focus on food loss, then here you see the figures on the loss of fresh products that we have on the total amount of products that we have bought at producers. Uh, there you can see that in 2021, we had the loss of 2.46% on our fresh products. Uh, that can be fruit, vegetables, but can be dairy, uh, can be potatoes, bananas, bread. Uh, everything that has an expiry date is taken into account. And then here you can see that um, that's the percentage that we have on that kind of products. Huh? To give you a benchmark, um, in the Netherlands, they started a very uh, interesting uh, project. It is called um, Stichting tegen Voedselverlies um, and it is led by Twan Timmermans. Uh, who led also uh, the fusions and the refresh uh, projects on a European level. And they um, calculated that uh, the five main supermarkets in, um, in the Netherlands had um, a food loss product, um, a percentage of 2.7 in 2020. As you can see, we with Colored Group, we had a food loss uh, percentage in that year of 2.2. So as a benchmark, I think that this can count. Huh? And what is um, the very interesting um, thing on the Dutch project is that they are measure, measuring their food loss in exactly the same way as we do. Huh? So they take into account every product that they did not sell that they bought, but did not sell to their customers. Huh? For us, it is the only valid KPI to measure this kind of loss. Huh? To give you another indication, those 2.46% of all the products that we have not sold represents approximately 33,000 tons of food loss. Huh? Why do I say food loss does not necessarily have to be food waste? Um, because, of course, we try to do the most sensible things with it. And here you can see that we also started monitoring this from, I think, 2008 on. And here you can see uh, what we are doing with all the products that are redrawn from our shelves and became food loss. You can see here that in 2021, uh, about 16% was donated to the food banks. Uh, and was not lost for human consumption. About 18% went to feed. Huh? Uh, the other things is biomethanization. And unfortunately, we can't avoid that also some products um, uh, come into the dustbin and are incinerated. Huh? To give you an indication uh, that we do really massive um, efforts um, to um, to make uh, progress in this um, uh, um, this issue uh, in 2022, the four first months of 2022, already 19% of the loss 
that we had in our shops was given to the food banks. Huh? So that is why we, as we say you don't have to um, uh, be emotional on it. Uh, you ha just have to count it. Uh, you have to see it as a product and then do the most uh, sensible things with it. Huh? If you take into account food loss in the supply chain perspective, um, then in spite of what um, uh, the Mrs. of Bell uh, told us, this is not that easy to do. Huh? It is what we see, and we've tried it several times, that it is very difficult to share waste data between supplier and retailer. Huh? Um, if you want to do that, uh, a real tight collaboration is needed. Huh? There has to be confidence between the two of them. And you can't do this with um, uh, what I call the big ones. Huh? You can't do this with um, suppliers that uh, deliver their products to nearly uh, every supermarket worldwide. No, you can only do that with uh, suppliers um, on, on who you have some kind of control. Uh, and then there are lots of issues that have to be taken into account. Uh, for example, um, very important are supermarket forecasts. Uh, how accurate are supermarket forecasts? Of course, if you know that we want to sell every product that we buy, then you know that there are two issues. Uh, if, you buy, if we buy uh, two, two less, uh, then we lose revenue. If we buy too many, we have waste. Huh? So making good forecasts is really a very, very important issue. And um, at Colorado Group, it is um, done partly by um, artificial intelligence. Huh? On the production side, of course, production efficiency plays a key role. What are the batch sizes of the producers? Huh? Uh, because sometimes you have an order of 800 pieces uh, um, but it is much cheaper to produce 1,000 and throw away 200 than to produce only 800. Uh, so what's the production efficiency? What is the service level agreed between the producer and the supermarket? What is the load diff of the producer? Uh, um, what is the percentage of load diff that they are aiming for? Uh, what is the requested shelf life? Uh, by the supermarket. To give an example of that, uh, um, we as a Colorado group, we need uh, approximately two days to get a product from reception into our stores. Uh. If then we ask, for example, a shelf life of uh, seven days, uh, then we are today, uh, the, the 11th of May, seven days plus two days to get them to our shops, means nine days of shelf life that we need. So that means that today we will not um, take products with an expiry day less than 20 May. Hmm? So that is a really a very, very important issue between producer of fresh products and retailers. What is the shelf life requested by um, the retailer. And of course, what uh, if, if you talk about vegetables and fruits, what is the crop size um, that a supplier can, um, can do, can make? Um, all things very important. And I forgot, of course, lots of lots of issues between uh, supplier and producer. Huh? It is not because it is difficult that we won't uh, try it. And so we have started um, a project with the Lochting. And the Lochting is a biofarm that produces uh, lots of bio vegetables that are sold in our shops. Huh? It is a collaboration between the Lochting Colorado Group and is accompanied by two um, consultants, uh, Lettuce and Foodwin. Uh, um, and of course, the, the product has just started, but already lots of issues come into uh, come forward, of course. Uh. First of all, you have to determine which products are involved. Uh. If you know that um, we sell about 67 uh, different vegetables that are grown by the Lochting in our stores, um, 
you can make sure that we can't really uh, focus on every every um, product of those 67. Eh? So you have to determine on which products are we going to focus. Eh? Of course, which plays a very important role also is what type of commercial relationship are, is there between the Lochte and Red Group. Eh? Does Gold Red Group, for example, in, engage it itself, itself to um, sell every product that has been grown by the Lochting. Uh, um, which are the company strategies on both sides? Uh, are there quality issues on supplier level? Mm? How steady is their production and how steady is their delivery? Uh, how much loss is tolerated at supply at a producer site or at retailer site and what with business continuity? Uh, for example, um, what if the Lochting uh, can't deliver a, a, a certain number of products that we uh, have forecasted to sell. And what if it is the other way around that we have made a forecast that is much lower than the Lochting produces for us? Uh, what are you going to do uh, when that issue ar arises? Uh, so this is um, a collaboration that started recently and, and maybe I hope so that uh, if there is a food waste fest next year that we um, can make a new presentation and tell you more about the results of this project uh, because it is a very interesting project and for us it is really the first time as a retailer um, that we can start that kind of collaboration uh, with uh, with um, with a supplier uh, with with whom we didn't have that kind of uh, bound in the um, in the in the past yeah? and i see that i've already taken my 15 minutes though my last slide is um, one with my key messages yeah? i can uh, really subscribe um, the, the baseline of this food waste fest uh, saying measure what you treasure uh, this is um, really um, um, something that we can uh, say to everyone, but if you start to measure, measure in the right way, uh, determine the right KPIs, uh, and then of course measure it, measure it as far as you can in detail. Uh, uh, to do that, you have to know your processes. You have to know what happens to the products once they arrive in your company. Uh, uh, make sure uh, food loss does not necessarily have to be food waste. Um, and another uh, thing I really want to say, certainly to retailers, don't feel guilty. Uh, we don't feel guilty because we have waste. Why don't we feel guilty? Because uh, in the same time, we do lots of efforts to have as lots uh, as uh, less food loss as we can get. So as long as you do your best, as long as you do efforts to lower your waste figures, uh, once you know them, of course, uh, you really don't have to feel guilty that you have to throw a banana in the dustbin. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Vic. Um... Can you stay around a little longer? We have a few questions from the audience. Are you, uh, do you have to go or can we uh, go over those? Yeah, 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 I can, I can stay. All right, okay. So um, one person said that it's pretty unique how open you are about your figures. Um, what drives you to do that and why should other retailers do the same, do you think? Well, the answer to that question is very, very simple. Huh? Um, it has to do with um, my statement that we have to treat this subject in an rational way, not in an emotional way. Huh? Um, we don't like to throw away food. Nobody does. Huh? Uh, but we don't get emotional over it. Huh? We calculate it, we measure it, and then we go in action. Huh? And there are lots of stories that are told about food waste, um, that it is uh, one third of uh, the worldwide production, um, that retailers are really the spin in the web. Um, um, so measuring is making um, the subject rational, eh? is giving information to everybody about what really is um, 
the, the, the state of the problem, um, what are real loss uh, figures. And of course, I'm very glad with the Dutch initiative, but it gives, but because it gives us an, an, an excellent benchmark to see how are we doing it regarding other retailers. Huh? And I think that um, be open on figures uh, can make that um, everybody wants to be the best of class, of course. Huh? And that uh, I hope that now the Dutch retailers who had 2.7 in uh, 2020 uh, want to reach a 2.2 that we had in that year. Thank you very much. Um, just one last question with maybe a very short answer, if possible. Um, as you know, the Superlast is re researching food waste in the retail sector, um, and food waste is taken up as an indicator of that. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, Superlast is in general researching sustainability, excuse me. So the results are expected in autumn. What do you think, what do you expect from it, uh, from this initiative of Superlast? And I say no comment? Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> well, well, we will yeah. see here. Yeah. Uh, of course, we are we are in discussion with um, with the, the the companies that make the super last, mm -hmm. because um, when you measure something, and you want to make a benchmark, then you have to make sure that everyone measures in the same way. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you have to agree on the the way you are going to measure things, huh? and maybe if one supermarket measures in another way than we do. Uh, maybe their figures will be better or worse than ours, uh, but you can't compare them. Uh, so what is the use of something like the super last uh, when they can't make sure that everyone who reports their loss figures to them calculated them in the same way? Okay, yeah, something to think about and strive for in general, I think. Uh, thank you very much, Vic, uh, and see you soon. Thank you very much. Real life. <laughs>